Hi, I'm John Peters, and in this video I'm going to make a ping pong table. Now I've decided to use Baltic birch plywood, and the main reason for that is Baltic birch plywood is sold in sheets that measure 5 feet by 5 feet. And since a ping pong table measures 5 feet by 9 feet, this is going to make the job a lot easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut 6 inches off of each piece of plywood. Now Baltic birch plywood is going to be a special order at most of your lumber yards. It shouldn't take them that long to get it, probably two or three days. Uh, and one thing that you might want to think about when you pick the plywood up is see if they'll cross cut it for you. And of course you want to cross cut at four feet six inches. Now I'm going to cross cut my piece of plywood and to make sure I get a nice clean cut, I put a brand new blade on my circular saw. And I also am using this jig that is designed to make a clean cut with a circular saw and if you'd like to know more about this jig I'll be sure to put a link on the screen and also I've put tape where the blade will be cutting and that will help to prevent tear out. Well if you're looking for just a really simple ping pong table once your plywood's cut, you're pretty much done. The only thing you would need is two saw horses and two 2x4x8s. And uh, you'll be able to lay the plywood out, buy your little net at a sports store, and you're ready to play. But if you like to make things, this is a pretty fun project, so stick around. Well, I decided to build half of the ping pong table, uh, really just to help me figure out my design. And one of the things I decided to use, or do, is use a lot of bracing and that's because I was worried about the plywood cupping or warping so what I use for the bracing is known as 1x2 the wood is poplar and you can get that at any home store or lumberyard but just remember 1x2 actually measures 3 quarters by an inch and a half my very first step is to measure and mark where I need to drill holes and I want an inch and a half overhang on the table. So I've created a jig and I just cut this at an inch and a half and if I hold that flush with the side of the table as I attach the one by two I know that I'll have an exact inch and a half overhang all the way around the table. Now to find the correct location to drill my holes I've cut another piece of plywood and this is at an inch and seven eighths. And if I drill my holes at an inch and seven eighths and uh, my apron is three quarters of an inch wide, I know that my screws will be hitting the center of my one by two. I'm using a special drill bit to make my holes. It's a pre-drill with a countersink bit. Now that I've got all of my holes pre-drilled, I'm ready to cut my first length of one by two. And to get that length, I'm going to use this jig. This is the jig to make sure that my apron is exactly an inch and a half in on the underside of the table. So I'll take the inch and a half jig, put it at the head of the ping pong table, and mark a line. That's where I want the long point of my first miter cut to be. So I'm going to have a miter cut at the head of the table, and back here at what is the center of the table, this is going to be a straight cut. I've clamped the 1x2 to the table and I'll show you with the jig how because it's flush to the edge I know that the 1x2 is exactly an inch and a half in and now I can use a inch and a quarter screw to attach the 1x2 to the top of the ping pong table. With both ends attached I can now attach the piece of bracing at the back of the table or I guess you could say it's the center of the table, but it's the back of the one side. And notice how the back piece of 1x2 here is being attached flush with the table's edge. Now I'm going to flip the table over and attach the last piece of 1x2 at the head of the tabletop. That's this piece right here, and this is going to have a miter on each end.
And now when I attach this piece of 1x2, I'm going to use the same jig to make sure that my spacing is correct. I just finished cutting a few pieces of 1x2 at 32 inches, and that's long point to long point of the miter. And then these pieces will be glued and nailed to the apron. My last piece of bracing measures 40 inches, and this may even be a little bit overkill, but I had the extra material hanging around, so I figured I'd use it. And it simply attaches, just like the uh, bracing I attached earlier, with a few nails and some wood glue. Now I'm going to make a few plugs to fill the holes on the tabletop, and because the plugs are going to be part of the design element, I'm going to make them out of mahogany and I'm going to do that with a special bit in my drill press. And once the plugs have been drilled, they pop out really simply with a twist of a screwdriver. I've allowed the glue to dry and now I'm going to cut the plug flush with the tabletop with a pull saw. I've just finished sanding both sides of the table with 150 grit silicone carbide sandpaper and now they're ready for finish. Okay, well I'm almost finished. I bought the ping pong tables upstairs to my studio to paint in a few boundary lines. And I should add that I used three coats of a waterborne polyurethane on the top and I sanded in between each coat. The next step is to attach the two tops together with a piano hinge. Okay, well that's about it, and you know I really did have a lot of fun with this project. Uh, but I should mention, this table is not designed to fold up and roll away like the ones that you can buy at a store. Uh, and it also doesn't fold in half so you can play against yourself. I just didn't want to get that involved with a project like this. But that being said, it, this is going to be perfect for our needs. What we're going to do is just unfold it on two saw horses or a work table the way it is right now. Uh, maybe I'll build a table base for it one day, and if I do, I'll be sure to put a link on the screen. I hope that you found the video useful, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos on how to make things. Thanks for tuning in.